fiery horse with the speed of light, a cloud of dust, and a hearty high silver, the Lone Ranger. Faithful Indian companion Tonto, the daring and resourceful masked rider of the plains, led the fight for law and order in the early western United States. Nowhere in the pages of history can one find a greater champion of justice. Return with us now to those thrilling days of yesteryear. From out of the past come the thundering hoof beats of a great horse, Silver. The Lone Ranger rides again. Come on, Silver. Let's go, big fellow. Are you Silver? The town of Dusty Springs had little to recommend it. Surrounded by hills, it was cut off from all breezes that might have relieved the monotonous heat. It existed only because prospectors made it a jumping-off place for their treks into the mountains in search of gold. Hopeful Hank had grub-staked many of these prospectors. His little store was well-stocked with goods that came in by mule freight. Hank was known to many. His genuine good nature was known to many more. Yeah, rain up, Jason. Ho oh, there. Oh, 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 oh. <laughs> Listen to him. <clears throat> is that noise coming from the store? It is. Jason, it's beyond me how any man can be gay in a sinkhole like this. That must be the critter we heard about. Hopeful Hank. Yeah, obviously, Jason, obviously. Do you think we can pull the wool over his eyes, Will? We can and we shall. And, Jason, please remember that I am Colonel Weller. Come with me. Dusty Springs. Good morning, sir. Good morning to you. May I ask whom I have the pleasure of addressing? Huh? Oh, you mean, what's my name? I do, sir. Me, I'm just plain Hank. Hopeful Hank, they call me. Better to have hopes and cash, I always say. A gent can hope for a lot more than he'll ever <laughs> really get. <laughs> uh, splendid philosophy, my friend. Yes, indeed, splendid. <laughs> Shake hands with Colonel Weller. Where is he? Oh, you mean you? Yes, yes, of course. Yes, sirree. <laughs> a colonel, huh? Gosh, I'm downright glad to meet you, colonel. Uh, shake hands with my partner, Jason Potter. Howdy, Potter. Glad to know you. Likewise. I uh, trust you will not judge us by our clothes. We'll not be in this, um, well, I might say, poverty-stricken condition very long. Oh, shucks, No, colonel. sir. We'll soon be rolling in wealth. Now, colonel, <laughs> don't you get to talking too free. No, Jason, that tone of voice. We'll watch your speech. First thing you know, you'll blurt out things we should keep a secret. Nonsense, Jason. Mr. Hank is used to hearing about men who are on their way to their gold claims. Isn't that so, Hank? Sure thing. Now, there you go, doggone it. Let's let the cat run out of the bag. Jason, the trouble with you is that you're unaccustomed to wealth. You're afraid of it. Well, I hate to take chances. I dare say you're not greatly impressed by men who own gold mines, are you, Hank? I sure <laughs> seen a lot of them set out to find a gold mine, but... Precious few come back with one. Hey, you must lose considerable by staking these, uh, these unfortunate creatures who spend all their days following the will-o'-the-wisp. 
Come again? Uh, searching for the gold at the end of the rainbow. Oh, oh, well, I've grub staked plenty of prospectors, if that's what you're getting at. Uh, did you ever see a more likely piece of oil than this? <laughs> Examine that nugget, Hank. Pick it up, look it over, tell me what you think of it. Colonel, this here is downright first rate. Get what we came for and let's get on our way. Uh, uh, oh, oh, very well, Jason. Uh, what do you want, Colonel? <laughs> Don't ask what I want, Hank. Ask what I intend to buy. I'm a man who buys only what he can pay for. Well? I want a sack of Rioli beans. Oh, beastly thing for a man to live on for days on end. You aim to live on Rioli beans, Colonel? <sighs> no choice, my friend. I have no choice. <laughs> Odd situation, I must say. Colonel Remington Jackson Weller reduced to a diet of beans. Oh, stop grumbling, Colonel. It won't be for long. You got a claim to stake out? Of course. That nugget came from my property. Gosh. I'd like to buy what I need with that nugget. Well, it'd buy a lot of grub. Shall I wait? Oh, no. I've given away the other nuggets. That's the last one I have. I must keep that as a sample of the ore. Well, now, look, Colonel. I grub stake a lot of men. Now, there's no call for you to live on beans and nothing else. Well, uh, you might trust me for a spade and perhaps a pick. You got no tools? We thought we'd visit the property and pick up some outcroppings, then come back and buy equipment. Well, that ain't necessary. I'll stake you, Colonel. Of course, we'd insist on giving you a share of what we find. That's customary. Well, now, I... Colonel, don't go giving away our shares. Every foot of our land's worth thousands of dollars. Jason, do stop pinching pennies. We can well afford to be generous. I can see Hank is my kind of man. I have revised my plans accordingly. Uh, what do you mean, Colonel? I uh, had planned to start in a small way, a very small way. But if you're going to grub stake us, and if you take an interest in our property, we'll go all out. That's it, Jason. We'll go all out. But, Colonel, I hate to give away... Nonsense! Anyone... I'm going to give Hank a one-third interest in our claim. One-third? No, no, Colonel. I said a one-third interest. And he, in turn, will give us all the supplies we need. Tools and machinery, blasting powder, lots of staples, barrels of flour and sugar, cases of tin goods. And our two worn-out horses? We'll have to have a wagon. Perhaps two wagons. And strong horses or mules to draw them. And rifles. But gosh, Colonel, I got only one wagon and two mules. Only one? Yeah, and I... I suppose we can make one wagon serve the purpose. I didn't figure on selling the mules. We'll return the wagon, of course. Mules, too. When we're through using them. Now, let's draw up an agreement right away. The sooner we start, the sooner we'll be rich. All three of us. From that point on, hopeful Hank had little to say. Colonel Weller took charge of things. Hank's team of mules was hitched to Hank's wagon... Then the wagon was loaded to capacity and beyond. When the colonel and Jason had left, Hank looked at the empty shelves in his store and began to wonder whether the signed document, a one-third interest in the Weller property, was sufficient payment for all that had been taken. But when on the next day Hank's wife saw the store, she had no such doubts. You crazy, simper, and easy-going fool. I expect if they'd been able to get wheels beneath the house, you'd have let them take that along. Now, Jane, Oh, shop. stop it. I'm sick and tired of the way you hand out everything to anyone who comes along. Grub staking. We got a whole trunk full of shares and couldn't swap the whole works for a side of bacon. But, Jane, someday <laughs> someone will strike it, Rich. And the colonel was once a millionaire. He's Colonel said... Remington Jackson Weller. Millionaire, my eye. Colonel Hornswoggle Skinflint, that's what his name should be. Shh, Jane, there's a customer just reined up outside. Well, what good's a customer when we got nothing left to sell? Well, he might want oh, some. Clear out. I'll tend to things. Go on. Get to the back room and out of my sight. Jane, you're too distrustful of human nature. Hello. You ordered the horses while I was in store, will you? Uh -huh. Masked. Hank. Hank, come back here. Please don't be alarmed by this man. Hank. I'm here, Jane. I'm here. Gosh. Whatever you want, we got none. We are cleaned out. I just want information. Here, please look at this handbill. It describes a couple of men we're trying to find. A handbill? They're confidence men. Have you seen two men who answer this description? 
confidence men? Yes. They're wanted by the law in Washoe County. One of them calls himself a colonel. Let me see that handbill. Ain't it you've been took in by confidence men? Charlene. Chin whiskers. Oh, the ornery flim flam and sidewinders. Then they are the same pair. Have they been here? Look at our store. Look at the empty shelves. And you can add a wagon and mule team to the stuff that's not on the shelves. Ornery crooks. I want to think of how they took me in. How long since they were here? Yesterday. Late yesterday. The polecats give me a slick tongue talk of how they had a rich gold claim. They give me a third interest and took what they needed. They took what they could carry, whether they needed it or not. They could set up storekeeping with what they took. Oh, if I could just get my hands on them. Did they give you an agreement? Yeah. Well, that's their usual trick. It keeps them within the law. Within the law? Yes, ma'am. Hey, you mean to say that I can't do nothing to them for swindling me? We'll see if something can be done. Did they tell you where they were going? Yeah. They said that they was going up. They... Now, let me see. Yeah. They was heading for their mine on top of Rock Mountain near the three tall pines. Now, look at Look at here, mister. Are you a lawman? And if so, why are you wearing that mask? No, I'm not a lawman. But you'll hear from me. Well, hold on. Why do you wear the mask? Adios. Jane. Jane. Look what he left here with the handbill. Look. A silver bullet. Mm-hmm. Jane, look outside. That white horse. And the engine. He called him Tonto. That's the Lone Ranger. Oh, Oh, my sakes. The Lone Ranger. Hank, maybe, maybe he can get our goods back. Well, he can't. You heard what he said. The law can't touch them crooks. But by Juniper, I can. I'll get that last box of cabbages. Well, what are you going to do? I'm going hunting for a pole cat that's riding in my wagon. I'm going over to Gaiman's Cave. Gaiman's Cave? That's where them crooks said they was going. But you told the mask man. I told them wrong, Jane. I done it deliberate. Because I didn't want no one to get to them before me. I'll deal with them. Mm, but, Hank, they might deal with you. Let them try, that's all. Just let them try. I've been took for the last time. This hand builds the straw that's busted the back of the camel. You, you sure you can find them? You bet I can find them. I'll find them in one of the cafes near Gaiman's Cave. Jason, my regards to you. Likewise, Colonel Weller. <laughs> I've got to hand it to you. You should have put it over on hopeful hands. <laughs> and now, my friend and partner, we can relax for a few days. And perhaps convert some of our supplies into cash. I'm in favor of relaxing here for plenty of days. We had a hard trip since leaving Dusty Springs. Oh, uh, Jason, look toward the door. Hmm? Tank. It is indeed. He's seen us, too. He's coming here. He must have found out about us. Leave him to me, Jason. I knew I'd find you two sooner or later. Well, if it isn't hopeful, Hank. Welcome, welcome. We've just paused for refreshment before proceeding to start work on our mind. Uh, on your mind. Yeah, well, you can just pack away that slick talk. Well, uh, yeah? here, see what this handbill has to say about you two flim flamming crooks. Where did you get this? Never mind that. I got it. And that's the main thing. I come here to take back the stuff you took from me. Why, Why you... Jason... What's the matter, Hank? Are you dissatisfied with our agreement? That's putting it downright mild. You wish to call it off? I aim to take back my wagon and all that was in it when it left my store. Very well. But Colonel... Silence, Jason. Hank, your wagon's in the rear of this cafe. Lead on, and we'll follow and help you load it. You will? Of course. I, uh... I wonder if I misjudge you. Uh, come, Jason. If you say so. We'll go out the rear door. Go ahead, Hank. Hi. Well, uh... What are you up to, Jason? I'm afraid Hank has signed his own death warrant. That handbill will ruin us. You mean... I mean, we've got to get rid of him to protect ourselves. The curtain falls on the first act of our Lone Ranger story. Before the next exciting scenes, please permit us to pause for just a few moments.
Now to continue our story. The mild, genial manner of the man who called himself Colonel Weller cloaked the heart of a murderer. Hopeful Hank went out the rear door of the cafe without the slightest suspicion that he was about to be killed by the two who followed. Gosh, it sure is dark out here. I can hardly make out the saddle shed. That's what that building is, I reckon. That's right, Hank. That's the saddle shed. Is that where you got my team and wagon? Your team and wagon? <laughs> Why, Why, Jason? You... What do you mean by that? Premature, Jason. Don't be premature. Huh? Uh, come with me, Hank. I'm sorry you're not satisfied with the agreement we made. Yes, indeed, I'm very sorry. I suppose you believe the libelous statements in that handbill you showed us? This way. Uh, all I know is what the handbill told me. It says you're wanted by the law in Washoe County. And besides that, my wife was downright riled because you just about cleaned out our store. <laughs> the stuff brought precious little when we tried to peddle it. You what? <laughs> Jason must have his little jokes. Didn't sound to me like no joke. Did you two go and sell that stuff you got for me? Did you? What's the difference what we did with it, my friend? We gave you an interest in our, uh, I might say, in our future in exchange for it. By gosh, I bet you got no gold claim at all. Well, then be a time, Jason. Right? What was he going to say? What's the difference? Huh? What's this? Take it easy. Remember me, Hank? That voice. Your His lady... mask. Ah. What's the meaning of this intrusion? Who are you, sir? I came to get Hank. Now, hold on. Why, it you... It would be a mistake to draw. How'd you get here? I told I you... I waited that... to see where you went, Hank, and followed you. If this is a robbery, oh, I'll no, have... Oh, no, not at all. I have a few plans, and it's necessary for hopeful Hank to go with me. My plans depend on it. Well, I... Our uh, horses are around the side with yours, Hank. Come on. I got some business to finish. Come on. I... But you don't savvy. No. Hey, let me go. This way, Hank. Hey, let me go. Take your hands off of me. Eddie, Jason, let them go. But I tell We're you... well rid of hopeful Hank. But he's got that handbill. He'll make trouble for tut, us. Tut, my partner. What trouble can he make? Legally, he hasn't a leg to stand on. What we've done in Washoe County counts for nothing here. There they go. Splendid. Now, come on. I'm very glad it wasn't necessary to kill the old man. Having sold the goods we got from him, we'd have been in a difficult situation. Now, with him gone, we have only to keep traveling and keep out of his way. Well, let's get back inside. I left something half finished on the table where we were sitting. And uh, <clears throat> I also, Jason. We'll finish our uh, refreshments, then we'd better shove on for far places. Hey, uh, Colonel Whaler. Uh, well, uh, what's on your mind, waiter? Where have you been? Where'd you leave Hopeful Hank? What's it to you? Well, wasn't he with the two of you when you left here? Uh, he's gone back where he came from, my good man. He made a sudden change in his plans. Doggone. The Redskins been looking all over for him. He finally got here and I told him he'd come to the right place. What Redskin? A critter uh, sitting over yonder. Uh, what's he want of Hank? I didn't ask him. I shall ask him. You, Indian. Uh, me, Tonto. I'm Colonel Weller. Perhaps I can be of assistance to you. I'm informed that you're looking for someone. That right. Me come here to find fellow named Hopeful Hank. For what? Well, me got message for him. Uh, message. What's the message? Well, you not name Hank. But, but perhaps I can deliver the message. If its importance justifies the effort. Well, you tell him... Him own plenty big gold claim. Huh? Composure, Jason. Composure. What's that about a gold claim? Well, him grubstake plenty feller. Him grubstake feller who find Eagle Rock gold claim. Feller die, now Hank, owner a claim. Oh, indeed. Well, I do declare. Sit down, Jason. We'll sit with Tonto and hear the story in its entirety. <laughs> Now, tell us all about it, Tonto. While Tonto talked to the schemers in the cafe, the Lone Ranger and his prisoner reached a small camp in the mountains. Oh, sir, oh, oh, oh. He I'll get down. Hey, you can't do this to me. This is again the law. This is... Take it easy, Hank. Leaving silver bullets just like you as the Lone Ranger. Let me help you off that horse. Untie my hands and I can get off without no help. Come on. 
If ever the real Lone Ranger finds out about the way you've been posing as him, he'll get you. Chances are you're in cahoots with these dad rabbit scheming owl hoots. <laughs> if ever I... Hank, you're worse than a magpie. I'm worse than a barrel of wildcats when I'm riled real sore. And I'm riled. If you'll keep still for a few minutes, I'll tell you something that may calm you down. Making me ride with my hands tied. I'll free your hands. Mm-hmm. Uh, handling me like I was nothing but a kank tanks or schoolboy. Right in front of the colonel and Jason. They probably would have killed you. No such thing. They was going to call our deal off and give me back my mules and wagon and the goods they got from my store. They couldn't do that because they sold your goods. Huh? Including the mules and the wagon. But they said... Hank, those two are all that the Warshaw handbill said they were and more. As a standing reward for Weller and his partner. Huh, then why'd you help them? Why'd you take me away when I was having a showdown? Because the showdown was going their way. Who are you? I uh, left a silver bullet. You mean you're really the Lone Ranger? Hank, I want to save your life and your money. My money? Well, I got cash for your goods. That cash belongs to you. Toto's carrying out his part of a plan to get it for you. What kind of plan? You'll see when Weller returns to your store sometime tomorrow. You mean he'll go back there? Great day, my wife will skin him alive. You'll have to talk to your wife. Now listen to me. Shortly after noon on the following day, when Colonel Weller and his sidekick reined up in front of Hopeful Hank's store in Dusty Springs, Hank saw the two men through the window and cautioned his wife. Now, now remember what I told you, Jane. Don't you let your anger and rage boil over. If I had to say, I'd now, be just... still. Let me do the talking. They're coming in. Hank. Hi there, Colonel. Come in, Jason. We didn't know whether we'd find you here or not. We were worried when that masked man made off with you, weren't we, Jason? Yeah. Yes, indeed, we were very worried. Had no horses ready to take after you, you know. Yeah, and, uh... I know. Now, how'd you get away from him? Uh, he had nothing to give me. It's someone else that he's out to get. Good. Well, I declare, Hank, is this your wife, this charming lady? You mean me? Delighted to know you, ma'am, delighted. I'm glad you're here at this time. Your husband thought my friend and I had... Um, Defrauded him. You flim-flammed, Hank. That's what you done. I'm hurt, ma'am. Deeply hurt to have such accusations hurled at me. You was going to give back my mules and stuff? Um, Hank, I must confess, I sold your goods. The mules and all. We love oh, all But the... wait. I have the cash for you. Every penny that we got. Furthermore, I have dipped into my little store of hoarded money, my savings, as it were, to prove to you that I'm not a, a charlatan, a swindler. Here, Hank. Is your money. I'll take that. What's more, I'll count it. I'll give back that paper we signed. The paper that makes me a partner in your gold claim. Yeah, you better do that. I got it right here in this box. I got interest in a lot of gold mines around here. And none of them worth the paper the stock's written on. Here you are, Weller. Thank you, Hank. And um, now I uh, want to make a little gift to you. I want to help you. I want to cast my bread upon the waters. Uh, what's that mean? Hank, I'll take all that worthless paper off your hands and give you cash for it. How much? Well, uh, <laughs> not as much as I like to give you, but as much as I have. Yeah. Colonel, not all that. Small bills make a big stack, and them look like small ones. Oh, I don't know. Maybe one of these mines I got shares in will turn out to be worthwhile. Indeed. Hank, you take what you can get for them no-good papers. <laughs> Confidentially, my friend, that would be wise. Well, all right. There they are. You bought yourself some mining stock. Winner, that eagle mine better be good. That's what it better be. <laughs> Don't worry, Jason. You heard what the Indian told us. Yeah. <laughs> Old Hank had half interest in it. The owner of the other half is dead. And his interest goes to Hank. I think we should have seen the lawyer before we come out here on the location. I want to see what we have bought for a few paltry dollars. All the savings we'd cashed against a rainy day. Quiet, Jason. Hey, here's the three big boulders nesting right on the edge of the creek. 
That must be the place. Yeah, it must be. Yet I see no sign of a gold mine. I don't see no sign of anything to show that anyone's even scratched dirt around here. Yeah. Curious. Oh, boy. Oh, oh, oh there. Boy. This must be the right place. Just what the Indian described. Oh, it is indeed. Now, let me examine the certificate we got from Hank. We'll check the location. Well, uh, if we've been took in... I... Wait. Huh? Jason, this description, it says that... Oh, my. It's the wrong place? No, no, Jason. It's the right place, but it's in the Washoe County. Then we better get clear. You better heist your hands. What the... Hank, you here. You bet I'm here. Had to ride hard to make it ahead of you. Uh, put that gun down. Not on your life. I'm capturing you for Washoe law. Why, you scheming old cow? Hold it. You got what you paid for. Told me yourself the claim was worthless. Why, you tricked us. Got us to cross the county line. I'll show you. Your turn, Weller. Go for your gun. No, no, no. Don't shoot again. I surrender. Well, that's good sense, Weller. Uh, Sheriff. My arm. My arm's busted. We'll patch you up in the jail. Bring the horses, Toto. That redskin. His name is Toto. He's the one who told me. That's right, Weller. You told about an old man who had died. Nearly every one of Hank's grub staked has died without striking gold. But you're my pay dirt, Weller. You and Jason. How about that, Sheriff? Well, Hank, I promised the masked man that the reward would go to the one who captured Weller and Jason. Hank made the capture. That's right. And he gets the reward. Good. One, Toto. Steady, easy, big fella. Mon Silver, get him up. Uh, uh, Hank, Hank, be reasonable. I'll need money for a lawyer to protect me in court. At least give back what I paid for the worthless stock. <laughs> After all the trouble that masked man went to get it for me? Not on your life, Colonel. The Lone Range, you wouldn't like it. The story you have just heard is a copyrighted feature of the Lone Ranger Incorporated.